Hello and welcome into the Red Zone, our 10th episode of the season and the first postseason edition, as the North Central Cardinals are once again 10-0, finishing off another perfect regular season with another dominant performance on Senior Day as they capped off their conference slate with a 63-3 win over Augustana. The Cardinals now head into the NCAA Division III Football Championship as one of the favorites to win it all. But up first, it's a visit from the Lake Forest Foresters on Saturday. I'll cover all of that with head coach Brad Spencer, and this week I'm joined by the offensive line duo of senior Will Ebert and freshman Alex Naprick to get their different perspectives on the season and on senior day. But first, let's check out the highlights from Saturday as North Central closed out their schedule in style. Plenty to celebrate for the North Central Cardinals as they conclude their regular season with Senior Day festivities pregame, a conference championship already in hand, and the opportunity to once again go to the postseason with a 10-0 record. They took on the Augustana College Vikings on a chilly day in Naperville as the weather jumped from summer to winter overnight. After a Cardinals fumble on fourth down gave the visitors great field position, Aukie QB Cole Bardwaj is hit as he throws and the ball floats right to sophomore linebacker Angelo Cusimano for yet another red zone turnover by the Cardinals defense. The very next play the Vikings run on offense, it's another turnover. Senior linebacker Sam Taviani knocks the ball loose and guess who, Cusimano jumps on top of it. Two takeaways in two plays doubled his season total to four. The Cardinals then do what the Vikings couldn't and take advantage of the turnover, with senior Ethan Greenfield punching in the touchdown to give North Central the lead. Next Vikings possession and here comes the Cardinals defense again. Senior defensive end Tyler Rich gets the sack after a nice spin move left his blocker in the dust. After his two yard score, Ethan Greenfield ups the difficulty level on his next one. 68 yards on this touchdown run, a new longest run of the season for Greenfield, and one of the Cardinals' brightest shining senior stars was going supernova on senior day. How about another sack to force a Vikings punt? It's Taviani this time shot out of a cannon into the backfield to bring down Bardwaj for a huge loss. On the first play after the ensuing punt, it's Terrence Hill's turn for a big touchdown run. 35 yards, straight up the middle, and the two senior running backs were really putting on a show still in the first quarter. I know this is sounding like a bit of a broken record, but how about not one, but two sacks for senior defensive end Dan Gilroy on the next Augie possession. First, he literally pushes a lineman into the quarterback, and then a nice stunt move frees him up for two in two plays. Junior Nick Rummel was playing only his second game as a wide receiver since 2019, but you wouldn't know it when he's making plays like this great diving catch to reel in the pass from quarterback Luke Lanen. By this time, Greenfield was overdue for another touchdown run, so he carries this one in from 11 yards out for his third score of the first half and a 28-3 lead. But there was no Atlanta Falcons curse for the Cardinals, as on their next possession, Lane and airs it out for D'Angelo Hardy, who makes a great catch despite good coverage by the defense. It's the junior's 12th TD catch of the year, finishing off a career-best regular season. The Cardinals registered seven sacks as a team on the day, and here's cornerback Antoine Walker getting in on the action. The NIU transfer showing he can rush the passer just as well as he breaks up downfield throws. With time winding down in the first half, Lanen is flushed out of the pocket, but is eventually able to find a wide open green field along the far sideline. And Ethan lowers his shoulder for the final yard into the end zone. His fourth score of the game in which he ran for 163 yards. Trying to keep up with Greenfield, on the first play of the second half, it looks like Hill is on his way to a 70-plus yard score of his own, but he's tripped up just short of the end zone by a great tackle. Of course, he does eventually finish off the drive with his second TD of the game. But naturally, he wouldn't be denied next time. After barely staying on his feet, Hill goes 68 yards for the touchdown, 
his longest run of the season as he led the Cardinals on the day with 216 yards on just seven carries. Angelo Cusimano would contribute to one more turnover as he knocks this ball loose for it to be recovered by Zach Orr, who now has five takeaways in the last six games and brings the Cardinals' season total to 29. Sophomore Joe Sacco would finish off the scoring for the day with his sixth rushing score of the season, and it's party time in Naperville. The Cardinals go undefeated once again, are CCIW champions once again, and have a lot of momentum as they embark on another journey towards playing for a national championship. It was a day of celebration on Saturday, not only in the end zone, but also before the game for the team's seniors and after officially as CCIW champs. Head coach Brad Spencer was, of course, in the middle of all of it. Brad, welcome into the show and congratulations once again this week. Thanks, Alex. I appreciate it. We had a lot of fun Saturday. So your first year as the coach who's greeting all of the seniors yeah. and their families pregame, what was that experience like for you your first time going through it? It was awesome. I mean, I first had to ask Jim Miller what, what I need to do because typically I'm in uh, the field house getting the offense ready. But um, it's a special moment, uh, you know, to be able to greet those guys. We get to see them every single day. So uh, there's, there's not a whole lot new you can say, say other than, you know, just continue to reiterate how much they've meant to the program. and. You know, maybe it's a little bit different for me just being my first year as a head coach. And, you know, all these guys, uh, especially the fifth-year seniors, decided to come back knowing that. And uh, that means a lot to me. means a lot to my family. It's something that I'll remember my entire coaching career. Is it odd at all to be celebrating, in theory, the end of something when, in the view, I'm sure, of most of your players, they're just really starting something with this second season, so to speak, kicking off this weekend with the playoffs. Yeah, that's a good point. And I, th I think our guys have a good balance and, and understanding of that, uh, that you can stop and pause, uh, make sure that uh, the seniors are at the forefront of our mind. And, and that's something that we stress all year. I mean, day one of camp, we make it very clear that this year is about our seniors and, and what they've done to help raise our standard and put us into the position that we're in. Uh, but at the same time, you've got to win a football game and having won the conference and getting the automatic bid, we certainly know that there's, there's games ahead that we need to move on to once, you know, once Saturday's over. So the game doesn't start perfectly for you guys. It yeah. would end pretty well, but it's two three and outs on offense to get things going. Augie gets a field goal in the middle of them after a long drive. How much credit does the defense and particularly Angelo Cusimano deserve for the spark they gave you guys as a team with two turnovers in two plays. Yeah, Ange did a great job. I saw him in the hallway actually on the way over here and I, I said, hey, you're our hero right now. And he said, no, it's the defense. I said, well, you made a couple big plays there to, to turn the tide for us. Uh, but it's definitely started slow. Um, you never want to do that. That can happen on you know days like senior day. Uh, fortunately, uh, our defense was able to step up and get some turnovers and that allowed our offense to, to get going, which, you know, once we did, uh, our guys did a great job in, in finishing that, that day off. Speaking of those turnovers, for the second week in a row, the defense really seemed to be focusing on literally taking the ball away from the opponent. Can we call this a pattern now with the way they're forcing fumbles? Well, we teach it. Uh, you know, every day we do turnover and uh, takeaway circuits. Uh, it's, it's one of our stressors every single week is to win the turnover battle. You're going to win a lot of football games when you win the turnover battle. So uh, we're practicing it, we're stressing it, we're coaching it. Uh, Coach Durking and his entire staff are doing just an excellent job with that. And, you know, on offense, Coach Studeman and the offensive staff are, are doing the opposite. You know, we're doing ball security drills every single day to make sure that we're not putting the football on the turf or, or throwing it to the wrong people. Uh, but that's something we have to carry forward uh, here in the playoffs. Also for the second week in a row, the defense racks up a whole bunch of sacks, a yep. lot of different guys getting involved in that effort. From your point of view, why were the guys so successful this week in getting to the quarterback? Yeah, well, I mean, it's, it's kind of the same crew, and they're doing a great job. Coach Janicek really has those guys playing at a really high level, um, and, and that's kind of been the theme of our, our defense, I feel like, this whole year, at least the last 10 weeks, has been sacks and turnovers. Uh, I don't think it's any question that our defensive line is the strength of our defense and everything rotates around them. Uh, you want to be good in the trenches. If, if you have an O-line uh, like we do and a defensive line like we do, you're going to have a chance to win a lot of football games and control the line of scrimmage. So on offense, it was really a story of your two star senior yeah. running backs in this one. Ethan gets four touchdowns in the first half alone. Terrence is told at halftime, 
how many yards he needs to catch Ethan, and he probably goes <laughs> and does that. How yeah. great was it to see those guys be able to celebrate senior day in the fashion that they did? It was actually one of the goals on offense was to get our three senior running backs, uh, T. Hill, Ethan, and then uh, Darius Bird going. And they did that. They had, I think it was 410 yards rushing between the three of them. We wanted to send them out uh, on senior day uh, the right way. And uh, yeah, Terrence did what he seems to do. He averaged 30 yards a carry, uh, over 200 yards. Uh, rushing. Uh, it was a lot of fun to watch. It was great to see those guys really get it going, uh, you know, after those first couple of drives. And then in the passing game, I think midway through the second quarter, Luke had negative two yards passing. And then all of a sudden, everything turns around with a couple of great throws. Yep. I think of the one in Nick Rummel who makes the diving catch and then the touchdown to D'Angelo Hardy. What switch did you see flip that suddenly got Luke in the passing game rolling? Yeah, we started a little slow in the passing game. Um, it was you know, good for him to come over to the sideline, just kind of relax a little bit. We're able to talk through some of their coverages and what we were seeing and the adjustments that they had made. Uh, and, and then he took advantage of it. Um, you know, and credit our offensive line for protecting him and uh, doing what they've been doing most every single week, which is getting our running game going. And, you know, that opens up so much for us when we're able to run the ball and then uh, we can protect him the way that, that those five guys up front do. Uh, Luke's going to have a, have a chance. So we're speaking less than 24 hours after the playoff bracket was unveiled for the NCAA Division III football championship. When you saw the bracket yesterday, your first thoughts were what? Glad we're playing. Uh, that's really the only thing that matters. Uh, you know, people ask who you think you're going to play or, you know, what do you think of the bracket? Um, you know, and our response is happy to be playing. You know, it's a, it's a one-week season from here. Uh, our only focus is Lake Forest. Uh, we're just thrilled that this group of seniors can keep playing. And, uh, you know, our hope and our goal is that we continue to, to raise the standard here at Cardinal football through, you know, hopefully the next five weeks. Speaking of your opponents in Lake Forest this week, this used to be a regular rivalry up through the 1950s and 60s. They had a very dominant season in the Midwest Conference. What do you know about the Foresters and is this just another week for you guys? Yeah, I mean, we're always going to be focusing on ourselves, uh, but we're familiar with them. We played them in 2018 uh, to open the season at their place. Uh, we're familiar with uh, their head coach. Uh, he's, he's been on some NCAA committees. Um, they're well coached. They play hard. They've had a lot of success in their league. They have some really talented football players. Their defense uh, is one of the top defenses in the country. Their offense runs the football. Um, so, you know, we've got to be on our game. Uh, like I said, it's, it's a one week season. Uh, we're worrying about week one. Uh, and, and right now it's just getting as much prep in as we can, you know, for Tuesday's practice. But uh, really excited to be at home. Uh, really excited to, uh, you know, be around our crowd again. And uh, again, like I said, have these seniors have another chance to play football together. It's time to check the tape here on the Red Zone with Coach Spencer. And Coach, I want to start with Terrence Hill's first rushing touchdown of the day. Mm -hmm. This was the first play of a drive and some outrageously good blocking here by the offensive line and great speed by T. Hill once he's in the open field. Yeah, ran counter here. Have a couple of pullers com coming for him for the weak side. And uh, as you can see, they all did their job. Uh, we were 11 for 11 there. You can see Matt Robinson chasing him down in the end zone. Uh, but. Our offensive line, and I mean, another day, over 500 yards rushing. Um, I think we've got a pretty rare group up there, every single one of them, uh, including our tight ends and, you know, our receivers downfield blocking for them as well. Second on Check the Tape this week, Dan Gilroy. We've seen him really grow in his performances as the season has gone on, and nothing showed that more than sacks on back-to-back -back plays here in the second quarter. Dan really seems like he's playing at his top and very scary level if you're an opposing offense. He is. You know, I, I give our athletic training staff, uh, Lauren Palsgrove and, and Sarah, uh, and our coaching staff a lot of credit for managing him. Um, you know, these fifth year seniors have played a lot of football. Danny's played a lot of football. Uh, so before the, the year, I told him, I said, hey, we're going to do our best we can to manage you guys. Uh, we want to play a long season and I, I think we're starting to see that Danny is, is finally getting those reps that he needed and he's starting to play his really best football at the right time. You know, a lot of a lot of football and a lot of being able to play in the playoffs in November and December is peaking at the right time. Uh, and it certainly seems like Dan Gilroy is doing that. And then this final one this week is a bit of a broken play. Yep. Ethan Greenfield finds himself in a lot of space, decides to run a route and put his hand in the air and eventually Luke Lanin's able to find it. 
Yeah, it's a great job by our offensive line uh, protecting. We're in five-man pass pro there. We've got five guys going out. Luke scanned back to, you know, really his third read here, and it looks like one of their D linemen hands in the way. So scrambled out a little bit, found Ethan. Uh, our, our running backs are such threats uh, in, in the passing game. Both of them are at the tops of the league in, in total touchdowns. Um, you know, and then Ethan makes a nice catch along the sideline, breaks a tackle, and into the end zone he goes. Well, I know I'm excited. I'm sure the fans are excited as well to be back at home this weekend to see you guys in action as that second season gets underway. Brad Spencer, best of luck, and thanks for coming on the Red Zone as always. Thanks, Alex. Opportunity is everywhere. It is in everything and within everyone. Your opportunity is at the center of all that we do. so that you can exceed your personal best. Welcome back to the Red Zone. We talk a lot about the success of the running game and the likes of Ethan Greenfield and Terrence Hill, but none of that is possible without the offensive line. And today I'm joined by its most senior and least senior members, senior Will Ebert and freshman Alex Nabrick. Guys, welcome to the show. Thank you for having Thank us. Thank you for having us. So, Will, I want to start with you and start with Senior Day. As one of the 12 fifth-year seniors who so many of the guys have said they're playing for this year, what was Saturday like for you? Um, it meant a lot to, uh, I know, me especially, but all of us. And um, it was just, there was just a lot. Like, we've taken this program to where we wanted it to go. We've changed, like, we've all put it so much into this program and just to see, like, how much it's grown through us and, um, it can't be done without all our teammates, and uh, we're just we're really happy with how we're moving this program forward. And then, Alex, from your perspective, over the course of this year, how have these seniors impacted you in both your first year on campus and your first year on this team? Mm -hmm. uh, coming in, they've just taken us in and created a family, let us know that we're welcomed, that we're part of the brotherhood, and uh, they've made it really easy to transition from high school to college um, and playing for them, it's, uh, it makes it really easy to go out there and just put everything you have out on the line and fight your hardest and just do it for them. So, Will, as the only senior in the main rotation of the offensive line group, what's been your role as a leader of that unit this season? We kind of lead together as a unit. There's not really, as an offensive lineman, you don't really have any, like, singularity of just like you can help motivate people and you have experience in the room, but it really just is five guys working together. Like I don't take any like ownership or leadership of the group. It's just, I, we all kind of work together and there's just a collective leadership and we all kind of just work together. It's not really just a singularity of one person doing anything. So just the unit works together. And there's a lot of like Gerard has a lot of experience. There's a lot of guys with a lot of games played. So just, any little bit of advice I can help with is what I do. And then Alex, you might be new to the unit this year, but you're certainly not new to North Central football. How old were you when you knew you wanted to be a Cardinal? Um, I was just eight years old when I attended my first North Central game. And then uh, after that, going for another four years, watching all the games, I knew uh, I wanted to be a Cardinal. And what advice has your brother given you from his time as one of the greatest offensive linemen in North Central history back in his day? Uh, he just tells me to go out there, uh, kick butt, put it all on the line. Um, one day might make it big, become a captain, and uh, I just strive to do exactly that. So, Will, you were talking about how there's no really individualism within the offensive line. You're as a group. How would you guys describe the camaraderie, the friendship, and the relationship you have as five, six, and more guys in that offensive line group? Um... There, there's just a lot like of, we just really all like have the best interests of the team like in mind. And as a matter of who's really out there, as you mentioned, like six, like Zach works in, we have like all of us kind of just working together for one common goal. There's not really any animosity toward it. Like it's just, we all have, take kind of pride in just being the like unsung like guys that do all the dirty work we don't want like any of the tension, like we always, like coaches try to push it on us, like, oh, it's like the big guys in the trenches win us these games. And 
we like, like it's nice getting a little bit of recognition, but we kind of like being in the background, just working together and helping those Greeny and T Hill and all our running backs get a lot of recognition because to see them get gets honored and they always deflect it back to us and we push it back to them. As you saw, like I just remember in 19 when Greeny tried to give us the offensive line award and one of my favorite like mentors, Ricky Sturba, just give it right back to him. Just we like like it's nice getting that little recognition, but it's also we don't they earned it. We want them to have it. So it's kind of yeah. Yeah, like uh, like Greeny said, when we have a good game, they have a great game. Yeah. So uh, when we're all working together, um, the running backs just they strive for greatness. They're running 10, 20 yard uh, yards downfield. Uh, whether it's Fortier that's in, whether I have to go to center when Gerard comes out, uh, we all just work as a unit and. Uh, building those friendships has have been awesome. Uh, you always see Jesse and Sam wrestling around in, a, yeah. in the wrestling room. Uh, so I've built great friendships that I know will last a long time. You guys just led me right into my next planned question, and it's about those running backs. And we saw celebrations. We see them every week. But we had a great view of Terrence Hill's 35-yard touchdown this week where you guys are already cheering and celebrating before he even gets to the end zone. <laughs> How much fun is it to block for these guys? It, it's a lot of fun just... Especially, I mean, seeing how fast these guys are green is like the speed that I've seen from them this year is I haven't seen it before in other years. And it's just really put like showing the work that he's put in every offseason to get faster, to always find a way to improve his game. And it's just nice you like as an offensive lineman, Shirt and Apps can attest to this. Like you kind of feel like, OK, we opened up a nice hole here. And as soon as like we feel that no one's catching those guys they're once they hit the hole, it's, they're gone. And it's really. We, once when you break a 40 plus yard run and you just that's as soon as I see him hit the open field it's like okay they're gone this is a touchdown let's, let's celebrate this one mm -hmm. like you said when they have the long 50 yard runs you're blocking your guy and you just look downfield yeah. and and he's just running an open field and you you look around and you see the other linemen all out of breath panting <laughs> and you're just running to go celebrate with the guys that's the that's the best feeling yeah, just trying to catch him <laughs> it's a little too fast for us now. I can't get there in time. <laughs> yeah, but we see Luke always seems to be the first guy down there. I mean, yeah. I, know he, I know he's fast, but it always seems like he runs in the frame at the very last minute as those guys are going into the end zone. Yeah, he's always trying to get a touchdown block. It's like, <laughs> okay, like, thank you for helping us. It's, I don't want you hitting anyone hard and getting hurt. Like, <laughs> maybe calm down a little bit. So, Alex, the guy you replaced on the offensive line is Sharmore Clark, the only guy to ever win the CCIW Offensive Lineman of the Year Award, but he stuck around the program this year as an assistant coach. What asset has he been in general to the group this season? And Alex, how's he helped you specifically in filling that role at left guard? Um, it's great to have him around practice. He's such a nice guy. He knows what he's talking about. Um, it was definitely kind of nerve wracking to fill such like a big spot, you know, three-time Offensive Lineman of the Year. Um, so I was definitely nervous, but he kind of got it, guided me through uh, like camp and stuff like that. Also with my brother, Eric, they, they also have like a tight bond together. And um, I'm glad to have him around. He kind of guides me through if I have any questions or anything like that, so. I lived with Sean Moore. Like he's one of my closest friends. It's, I do, it's weird. Like I played next to him for the first three years of my career. And it was a little weird this year, like not having him out there next to me just because we had such a good like chemistry and connection. But having him at practice and having his wisdom and just, he's all, like, it's nice to have like the offensive line perspective in the coaching room with him and Coach Naps. And it's just, they have a lot of wisdom that is helping us like pick up on other things that like we don't normally see. And they just have so much experience that it's nice having them around. All right, playoff time, second season, whatever you want to call it. Will, you've been through this a lot before. <laughs> What is your advice to younger guys like Alex about how to prepare for these next potential five weeks? And then Alex, what are you most excited about going into your first playoff experience? So uh, my advice was really, well, the thing that's worked every year for us is just, you gotta take this one week at a time. Like, you like to look ahead and try to like plan out what's gonna happen in the bracket, but you can't do that. It's, we got Lake Forest this week. We wanna play as well as we can against them. We wanna get a win and then it's really just, and especially for me, it's. Win or go home. I'm, this is my last go around, and you just got to treat every game like it's your last. Play your heart out and just take it one week at a time. Yeah, uh, I'm most excited to just play more football, keep the season going, you know. Um, Lake Forest, they have a great defense. 
So uh, I'm excited for a challenge, see what our offensive line can do, move the, move the defensive line and get our running backs into open space and uh, score some touchdowns. All right, as we always do on the Red Zone, some quick hits, some easier, some more fun stuff maybe to finish things up. As we have reached the end of the regular season for each of you guys, what's been your favorite memory or moment of the year so far? Um, honestly, it's being Wheaton again. I was, I was started off 0-2 against them in my career and that, like, I know all the fifth year seniors, like, that didn't sit right with us. We. So getting back to 500 against them, and hopefully Naps here goes undefeated against them in his career. But um, that's just it's the that's a tough, that's a, the closest game of the year. It's like it's nice to have that battle, and it's always, as a football player, you want to be in that dog fight every game, and it's that's just the most fun we have every every year at that game. Yeah, I, I have to agree. Uh, Wheaton game is definitely the most memorable. Seeing the fireworks after the game, yeah. and. Um, when I was little, like eight, nine year old me, seeing the fight for the little brass bell when my brother was out there, uh, it meant a lot to me to get the bell back, or keep the bell, I should say. And um, just seeing the fireworks after the game, celebrating, uh, holding the bell up in the air, was definitely one of the most memorable moments. I'd never forget it. So last week on the show, of course, it was an all coach episode. In addition to Brad, we had Eric Studeman and Shane Deerking sitting here on the couch. So if you guys think about the current roster now of guys, given that all three of those coaches are former Cardinal players, if you had to pick a teammate to be the best future coach, who stands out? Yeah, I'll go. Uh, one to me is definitely Gerard Thornton. He, uh, he takes control of the team no matter what. He's a great speaker, great motivator, uh, always hypes us up before games, and um, I think he wants to go into coaching after football, and uh, I think he'd definitely be fit for the job. I got, there's a lot of good leaders on our team, so it's kind of tough to pick. Um, honestly, Greeny knows so much about the game and just the way that he's like committed to, as a running back, learning what we're doing as an offensive line and just the way he, like, he wants to know every single aspect of the game. And that's a large part to why he has so, so much success as a running back. He knows exactly, like, based on a look, like, he knows what we're going to get, like how certain blocks are going to unfold and just his commitment to learning the game of football at every level I, and just the way he leads the team, like I, he'll, he'll be a great coach. And it's always fun, I feel like, after touchdowns especially, to see him kind of go around to the different groups and he's chatting with everybody, yeah. especially you guys. Those are really cool moments when we're able to catch those on film. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then finally this week, as next week is Thanksgiving, it's not too early to throw a Thanksgiving related question out there. So for each of you, your favorite Thanksgiving food is what? I'm going stuffing. Stuffing is, yeah. Uh, I like mac and cheese, homemade mac and cheese preferably. Uh, you can find tons of that on my plate. <laughs> Be nice, maybe a midweek thing next week in between playoff games, but obviously can't go too overboard with <laughs> having to play football less than 48 yeah. hours later. Well, Will Ebert, Alex Knapbrook, thanks so much for coming on the Red Zone. Really enjoyed it, and best of luck in the first round of the playoffs this week. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for you, having Alex. us. We all have a story to share, stories others can relate to, whether moments of sorrow or of hope and inspiration, whether a story of struggle or a moment of victory. Every little moment captured and shared helps us to feel more informed, helps us to feel more engaged with and connected to the community we all call home. Every little moment captured and shared adds up to something greater for us that something is the collective story of Naperville, a city rich in its volunteer spirit, its diversity, its traditions and celebrations, and so much more. In Naperville, there are so many stories worth sharing. And for the past 35 years, it's been our honor to tell those stories and share them with you. for this week's Red Zone play of the game. And with lots of big runs as well as sacks and turnovers, there were maybe more options this week than any other. But it had to be the immense effort by Terrence Hill on this 68-yard run that featured a bit of everything. After it looked like he was down, only after a short gain, 
the senior somehow gets back to his feet after landing on an Augustana defender and from there shifts into top gear, showing great speed, awareness, and evasiveness to eventually find the end zone. Hill finished with 216 yards on just seven carries and three touchdowns to lead the Cardinals rushing attack in another dominant performance. And that's this week's Red Zone play of the game. Thanks for tuning in to this 10th episode of The Red Zone. The regular season may be over, but in a way, the season really starts this week for the Cardinals. They take on Lake Forest at noon, an earlier kickoff time for the playoffs, on NCTV 17 and NorthCentralCardinals.com. So I hope you can join us for that. And congratulations, by the way, to the North Central Triathlon team on becoming national champions for a fourth time and sophomore Haley Poe for winning her second individual national title. Congrats as well to the men's cross country team on their regional championship as they head to nationals this weekend and to both Cardinals soccer teams on great seasons, including a first ever NCAA tournament game win for the men's team. The football team will be hopefully celebrating in a few weeks, but it's one game at a time starting on Saturday. Until then, I'm Alex Campbell. Thanks for watching.